Hi, everyone. Um, I am the luckiest woman alive to not only be part of Diana Initiative for the second year in a row, but introducing Ren Oliver for the second year in a row. This is without a doubt one of the most anticipated keynotes of the 2021 Hacker Summer Camp season, so you are in the right place. Um, I think the past 17 months have been a business continuity planning nightmare to say the least, and an enormously challenging time for the security community. Um, I am emerging from TDI 21 uh, with a lot of hope. Everybody here gives me hope. The Teens and Teen Village give me a lot of hope for the future of our industry, and RIN in particular is a very bright spark. I've had the privilege of working with RIN in the past at a jobby job and still get to collaborate and hang out with RIN and watch RIN star rise as an incredible DevRel leader and highly sought after keynote speaker. They inspire me, give me strength, and continue to teach me to be a better human. So without further ado, and before I start crying, please join me in welcoming Rin, uh, technical community builder at Camunda. Uh, Rin's pronouns are he and they, and their closing keynote is titled, Rising from the Ashes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Hello to everyone at the Diana Initiative. It is an absolute pleasure to be here. My name is Rin Oliver, and as Jasmine said, I'm a technical community builder at Camunda. So first things first though, got a little housekeeping to get out of the way. I would like to thank all the sponsors that made this possible. Please go check them out, check out their booths, check out everything they've got to offer. This has been a wonderful event. It would not be possible today without the sponsors that we have here. And definitely please let them know how much you appreciate them because without them, we all wouldn't be here. So thank you so much sponsors. Really appreciate you, you're wonderful. But on that note, who am I? <laughs> Good question. I'm here speaking to you today, and that's great, but this journey really wasn't easy. And as a matter of fact, I actually almost gave up. It was like, we're talking lowest lows you can get. And it was really, really hard to get to this point. And that's what inspired this keynote. So I am multiply neurodivergent. I am autistic, non-binary. I have dyspraxia, dyscalculia, um, and, something, ADD, <laughs> something that I'm vaguely forgetting, but yes, that. And those things have made it very challenging to um, get a career in InfoSec, get a career in tech in general. And this journey wasn't easy in that. Also, I lost a job in 2020, which is peak pandemic times, which is not exactly the time where somebody wants to go job hunting. So in 2019, I actually relocated from New Zealand back to America. And about four months after I got here, back to America, tried to settle with life, I lost my job. I'd had that job for four years and that one hurt. That was rough. Life comes at you fast. And I thought that it was gonna be three days later after that happened, I had to get on a plane and I went to London to give a presentation about neurodiversity at Mozilla Festival. And I was one of the first people that got to speak at the neurodiversity track because it was their first one. They weren't sure if they were gonna do it next year and they actually did do it next year and it was great. So that was good. But having to put on a brave face for that was really difficult. And I thought that that was, it, life was really hard at that time. And <laughs> I didn't even know it was up ahead because that was right. And then 2020 happens. <laughs> so, <laughs> Not only was there, you know, the pandemic, but where I live in Louisiana, there were also two, there were also a lot of hurricanes. We had two of them hit us. And it was actually the day I started my job at Espert with Jasmine. And I remember sitting there with a generator, using a generator to power my internet, which was by the way, satellite, because we live in a rural area at the time. And that was challenging. And we had lost two trees. All the siding on our house had been ripped off. And it was just rough. And that's not even taking into account that before I met Jasmine, I actually skipped ahead in my story because before I met Jasmine is, yeah, that was, that was even rougher. <laughs> and that's another reason why we're giving this talk today because things, things get challenging and you think this is the lowest it's ever gonna get and how will I recover? But I'm happy to report that in 2021, things are looking up, finally, hooray, that's wonderful. So the question is, how did we get from point A to point B? And you might be asking yourself, what happens if I fail? Well, as Elizabeth Gilbert said, 
Um, just freaking do it. The worst that can happen is that you actually fail. And it, the thing is, you do. Like uh, this quote says, you do it again and again, and you wear them down, and they'll eventually get sick of rejecting you. They get sick of seeing your letters, and they give up. They don't have any choice. So part of it, when you're searching for a job, is confidence, and part of it is insecurity. Combo those things, you'll eventually get there. You will fail. I need you to know that. You will fail. But that's that's okay. Like I said, I sent out about mm, 200 job applications during that peak pandemic job hunt time. I got through, I got seven interviews. And out of those seven, five of them got pulled because of the pandemic. And two of them put me through finals, only not to hire me at the end. So you will fail. But it's what you do after that that matters. And being vulnerable on the internet actually got me a job. I'm not joking. It did. That's how I met Jasmine. And that's very, very important. Because vulnerability can be an asset. And I know it's really hard, especially for people that are neurodivergent, to be vulnerable, to open up and share how we're feeling. But if you share those feelings and you say, I am really struggling right now, you never know what can happen. And if I hadn't done that, and if I hadn't had the bravery, and I'm going to say that, yes, I will call myself brave to say I am struggling and I don't know how much longer I can make it in this industry and I don't know how much longer I can go on being this depressed about job hunting in tech during a pandemic as someone that's a member of the LGBTQ community and that is neurodivergent. And I was just like basically being sad on the internet, yelling into the void. And if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have met Jasmine and then I wouldn't be, I've gotten my job at Kamunda. So being sad on the internet got me a job because I got my words in front of Jasmine at the exact right moment. So you never know who's going to see your tweets, and you never know who they know. And that's a future slide, but that's also very important as well. Making candles was actually how I kept moving forward when absolutely all I wanted to do was give up. I just wanted to be like, nope, I'm done, walking away. Having something to focus on the outside of that job hunt rejection cycle, which was never ending at that point, <laughs> because I sent out so many applications was, it was great. I made candles, I made wax melts, and I just kept afloat by making things that were pretty and that smelled nice and made me happy. And it also kept me afloat financially, which was really nice. So that was super fun. And shout out to all of our candle customers. Love you all. <laughs> um, but having something to focus on is key. You can't just be 24 seven grind. I grind mentality is nice and all, but you got to have something that's not the grind. You have to, whatever that thing is, if it's pets, if it's plants, if it's candles, whatever, gaming, I, that whatever you enjoy, find something that's not just sitting there waiting for rejection emails. It, that would be horrible. You don't want that. Find something to focus on that brings you joy that is not just waiting for rejections or prepping for interviews. You can't just be on the grind. That's not good for anyone. Another thing that you can do is ask for referrals. I am absolutely begging you to find a team of cheerleaders that will hype you up. Find someone in your corner, whoever that person is, that'll say, you need to hire this person. They are amazing. Having a person that believes in you and hypes you up and says that what this person has to offer is important to our company. And if we don't hire them, we are making a mistake. You need that cheerleader. Surround yourself with people who think you are amazing and that will hype you up and especially Ask for your friends to give you referrals. Say, can you give me a reference? Can you give me a recommendation on LinkedIn? Can you give me an internal referral? Anything, greenhouse link, you name it, give it, give me something here. Because you know people that will vouch for you. And if you think your friends won't talk you up, then um, they probably will. And if they don't, um, I suggest that you should ask them because you never know. You might be scared. You might say, oh, my friends are too busy. My friends don't want to, we don't really talk about work or we're not that close of friends. But if your friends, if you're struggling like I was struggling in 2020 and you have hit that low where you think this is never going to get better. I am never going to be able to do this and there is nothing I can do. And if you've hit that point where you are absolutely in the darkest depths of depression that you see no way out like I was, um, having someone like I did with Jasmine that will say, if we don't hire Rin, which is what she said, we are making a mistake. And that meant so much. And it got me in front of Esper, which got me in front of Kamunda. And you need to hire, have people in your life that will say, if we don't hire this person, it will be a loss for our company. 
And what's more important is you need to believe it too. You are worth something and you are worth referrals and you are worth everything and more because each and every one of us has something special to offer this industry. And I know it's hard. I have been there. Have I ever been there? And um, I feel that having a team around you that understands your worth and will tell you your worth when you don't believe it is key. And have those people in your corner that will say, I know that you don't believe that you're worth it, but you are, and I'm gonna show you when you don't believe it yourself. Another thing you can do on a happier note is find people to share your interests. And whatever those are, it's again, gaming, candles, plants, whatever that is. A lot of my coworkers and I love houseplants. So we sit here and send pictures of peperomias or talk about sensiveras or monsteras or whatever the plants may be. We have a whole houseplant thing <laughs> over at Kamunda. Uh, my manager is growing with a squash. Amar, I hope your squash are okay. <laughs> and I feel like it's, it's very important to have people around you that share interests that are outside of tech. Um, and whatever that is, just have hobbies that you can go to that aren't, again, that rejection job cycle, especially if you're job hunting. Even if you do have a job and you're comfortable and you have a great job and you're happy, don't spend all your time on the computer. Again, I know it's really difficult to get out of that grind mentality where you're like, but I could be working. I could be checking Slack. What if I check Slack? What if I check my email? Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Nope. You have weekends, you have days off, you have when work is done, work is done. Don't do it, nope. Go out, enjoy your hobbies, you deserve that time. And I know it's hard, especially if you're a manager or even if you're a higher up IC, like it can be hard. It can be hard, especially if you want a promotion. Like right now I'm going for a promotion, no joke. And it's hard to sit there and be like, but what if I could be working? But the thing is at a company that understands your worth, they'll say you don't need to grind to prove that you belong here, to prove that you are capable of doing that. You deserve the time that you are, you deserve your time off. You don't have to grind to prove anything. And that's really important too. So find people that will tell you that you don't need to grind or burn out to prove your worth because that's not how you do it. You shouldn't be somewhere where they make you grind to prove your worth. They should know it without you having to do that. And yeah. Find some hobbies, do something fun, do something nice for yourself. It's always good. Another thing you can do in terms of rising from the ashes and dusting off and recovering from those setbacks is looking for mentors. And that can be hard and it's really challenging, especially of course in the pandemic times, super challenging, but that's why there's Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Google Duo or whatever. Um, insert chat program here. And you can also of course be a good mentee. Um, We've also we've all seen those threads on Twitter where it's like, here's what to do to be a good mentor, but you've also got to remember to be a good mentee. Show up on time and be there and be respectful, especially if you have a mentor that's giving a lot of their time to help you specifically. So be a good mentor. If you are mentoring, be a good mentor. And if you're a mentee, be a good mentee. It's that simple. Um, being a good mentee can take a lot of effort, especially if you're neurodivergent, because it can often feel like a struggle if your mentor is neurotypical. I highly recommend drafting a how to work with me sheet and just bringing that to your first session with your mentor and saying, here's how I work best, here's how we can communicate, here's how we should work together on these projects, and here's what I'd like to learn, and here's how you can work together with me so that we can together accomplish these goals so we can get a fulfilling joint thing out of this mentor-mentee relationship. So bringing those documents together and having a plan for when you go into a mentor-mentee program is really important. Always have a plan, make sure you've got it leveled out and that your mentor agrees too. That way you'll get, both be happy at the end and you won't be left feeling disappointed. Another thing too, like I said, meet friends of friends. You never know who your friends know. And they might know someone who's hiring. They might know someone who has a different role if you're looking for a different job, you never know level up, meet your, meet your friends' friends, and see who they know. Because you might not know it now, but they might have something you need in the future, or you might have some skill they need, or vice versa. You never know, and you'll never know unless you ask. So I think that's very important that you meet your friends' friends, because without them, it's it can be challenging. And I think that that's really something that's important is that you broaden your network. It can really be a small, small place 
especially on cybersecurity on the internet. And I think that by casting a larger net and meeting friends outside of your direct inner circle, you can meet people that aren't necessarily like you. They don't have the same job. They don't have the same background. They didn't go to the same schools. They don't have the same interests, et cetera. Whatever that may be, diversify your life, meet your friends' friends, figure out who you know and who you don't. More importantly, meet new people. Meet new people. Always be looking to meet new people, meet new friends. I think that's super important because again, without having friends of friends and extending your network, you might not get opportunities and people might miss out on meeting you because you are a catch and that's important. So get out there, network, and of course, introduce yourself to others because you are worth it and you deserve to meet everyone that could ever influence your life in a positive way. Another thing you can do is of course, take classes, learn something new, hone those skills. I recently took a glass blowing class with my wife and we made uh, mugs and hummingbird feeders. And that was something that I would have never thought to do a year ago, but we did it anyway. And it was awesome. And now we have a beer mug, even though I don't drink beer, but hey, it's a mug. It can hold other stuff. And she has a hummingbird feeder, which has cute little hummingbirds come to it now, but we did it. We sat in front of a ridiculously hot furnace, blue glass, and it was, it was wild, but it was fun and it was new and it was really cool. And it, was, it gave us a chance to hone skills that we didn't necessarily think of to go outside of computers and to get off the internet and go outside and go do something cool. Um, we Disclaimer right now, we're both fully vaccinated, so that was good. <laughs> we wouldn't have done it otherwise. Um, but yeah, in terms of safety for right now, I would say, yeah, for now, go out and learn something new if you feel it's safe. If not, hey, there's online classes, there's a demi. Speaking of your demi, I also am taking a course in Java and Maven on Udemy, and when they go on sale, buy a course. I know we all have that backlog of Udemy courses we bought when they were on sale. Hit that up and see what's on there that you can take and learn something new. Hone those skills and get those certificates and show them off on your LinkedIn. Like That's what they're there for, and use them to leverage those skills and say, here's what I know, and here's what I can bring to the table when you go and negotiate and ask for that money, because you deserve it. Get that bag. <laughs> get the cash and get paid because you are worth it. So definitely go through that backlog of Udemy courses and add those certs that you've been sitting on to your LinkedIn profile because it's worth it. And I know people say it's not, but it can be. And even then you still did it. Why not have the shiny cool thing on the internet? Even though it's just pixels, it's still cool. You still did it. So don't shy away from those achievements. Even if you think, oh, nobody's actually gonna look at this, they might. And if they might, and that gets you a new job or gets you a different an interview that you didn't think that you would get with a shot, you never know until you try. Another thing you can do, of course, is put yourself out there. Go network. I know it's really hard, especially for people that are very divergent. This is the hardest thing you can do usually. It's hard, but it's worth it. And networking is awesome because it gives you a chance to meet people. There's actually a networking event after Makina, and you should go because you never know who you're gonna meet. And that's really fun to do because it gets you out of your comfort zone and it lets you meet people that aren't necessarily in your social sphere that you might not know. And they may or may not be hiring, but even if they don't, you still have a new friend and that's cool. You follow each other on Twitter, you hang out and that's awesome. You just maybe spam each other's likes a lot, but hey, that's okay. Still friends, awesome. And by putting yourself out there, you're saying, this is me, this is who I am. This is what I have to offer as a friend and as a person and potentially as a colleague. And that way they can come back and say, okay, well, this is who I am and this is what I've got. And you can decide if you want to continue talking. And speed networking is cool. I mean, for this one, I think it's five minutes. You can say hi to somebody in five minutes and you can get to know them at least on a superficial level and say, hey, what's up? And if you like them, you like them. If you don't, you don't, but still cool. And I think networking is understated in a lot of ways because networking and the social mixers are just, like I said, for people that are neurodivergent, it's often like nails on a chalkboard. It's really hard to go into those situations. But I find for me that if there's a place that's quiet and you can go to get away and there's a quiet corner, it makes it better. So as long as there's somewhere quiet to go and de-stress for a little bit, like the quieter space where everybody's not chilling, that's usually nice. So I find by going to networking events, even if you don't necessarily want to, even if it's for 15 minutes and then you bail, at least you went. And that way people can say hi to you, you can say hi to them, and you might like it more than you thought. You never know. But by 
going out there and meeting new people, you can actually get to know others and you can socialize and just be aware of those around you in a context that you, is not necessarily work. Networking events are cool in that. It's, it, it can be work-related if it's one of the work social networking things, but if it's one that's like at a conference where it's just a meet and greet, those are fun because they're a little more casual. And I find for me, I like those casual ones because there's not the pressure to be performing work. You don't have to put on the work persona. So if you're gonna network and you're neurodivergent, I'd say try to stick to the casual events because they'll be a lot easier on you and you'll find it a lot easier to handle those ones. Making connections, again, can be hard. So first things first, don't be afraid to ask questions. Asking questions, crucial. There is no such thing as a useless question. If anybody makes you feel like you've asked a useless question, throw it right back at them and say, what exactly that I said, it didn't make sense to you? Because then they'll have to explain it. And then they'll just probably feel bad. <laughs> Hopefully, anyway. So don't, feel, don't be afraid to ask questions because asking questions is how you learn things. And depending on how you learn, these questions can take different forms. So you've got to realize that people learn differently. Some people learn by listening. Some people learn by reading things. Some people learn by building things with their hands. And people all learn in very different ways. And this means that they'll have different questions depending on how they learn. So if, especially if you're into programming or you're in security, you might have different questions for something you're working on. If you're trying to debug something and you're an audio learner, you're gonna probably wanna watch a video that explains what you're trying to debug. You're gonna wanna watch a video that walks you through that code or listen to a tutorial. Um, or if you learn also by reading, you wanna go through, go and read those logs. You won't necessarily want to watch a video. You won't necessarily want to listen to a podcast that explains it in more detail. You won't wanna go build something with your hands. Depending on how you learn, that's how you solve problems. So asking questions based on how you learn is key to solving issues that you're facing. So learning how to ask those questions that will complement the way that you learn best is key. And so learn how to ask questions that make sense to your brain. Don't try to fight your brain. You won't win <laughs> because it's yours. You know yourself better than anyone. So hack your brain. <laughs> for lack of a better term, hack your brain. And um, just, especially when you're neurodivergent, it can be really hard because I have dyscalculia and when I'm faced with a lot of the math that comes with, for example, JavaScript, I'm just like, hmm, about that. And it can be really challenging, especially when we get into more complex algebra. And the one thing that I did find out through my work um, at Esper and at Kamunda is that I'm actually really good at like, complex linear algebra and not so much like the stuff with the letters don't like that so <laughs> and statistics also very good at statistics which shocker but again if you're put in situations where you're, a lot of people are put in situations where they feel like they're always going to fail but if you're put in situations where you are set up for success and that are played to your strengths you will win and you will shine so find a company and find an organization and find a team that sets you up for success don't work somewhere that sets you up for failure. Always go somewhere where they are gonna say, here's how we're gonna set you up to win because you deserve that and more. Another thing you can do, of course, psych yourself up. You are amazing. You can do this. Whatever it may be, you can do it, I promise. Another thing too, of course, if you do have a mentor, respect their time. But remember, yours is worth something too. If your mentor disrespects your time, find a new one. Again, yeah, your time is worth something and you deserve respect. So keep that in mind. Picking yourself up when you're down seems really, really simple, but it's really, really not. That's the thing. It's a real challenge to overcome. You can't even necessarily, you can't really overcome depression. I should know. I'm on antidepressants. Yeah, we're going on the mental health road. Because would this be a track if it was me sitting here today with you, if we're not talking about mental health and neurodiversity? No, it wouldn't. So we're going there. Um, I'm on antidepressants because I couldn't pick myself all the way up. And that's okay. And you should know that there is no shame in asking for help. It is okay to not be okay. And to say, I am struggling and I need help. And picking yourself up can look like a lot of things. It can look like asking for help. It can look like taking morning meds. It can look like setting alarms so that you remember to take said morning meds. 
It can look like taking a few days off. It can look like self-care or like staying a little late at work because you like working with your team and that makes you happy. Whatever that may be. Um, yeah, picking yourself up is hard and it can be a real, real struggle but you should never be afraid to ask for help, whatever that may look like. And another thing I'd like to talk about is resilience. I have been guilty of talking about resilience a lot. And I would like to actually add an addendum to my past talks about resilience because resilience isn't a substitute for a nurturing community. If you don't have a nurturing community, it doesn't matter how strong you are. It doesn't matter how tough you are. You are going to feel alone. And I know because I've been there and it's hard. It's hard to recover from that. And I feel like if you're not, if you've hit the point where you're at that depression level where you are trying really, really hard to be positive and slay those interviews and be like, just killing it. And you're out there on the grind, you're booking interview after interview and you're super hyped and you're just trying to stay positive because if you don't, the alternative is really bad. That was me, I've been there. I have been super positive and I've also been super sad online. Like I said, I have sent tweets where I said, I don't know how much longer I can be in this industry. I'm almost, I, I'm, out of, I'm out of hope, I'm done. And I was trying so hard to be resilient and I was at that point pretty alone. Um, and it was hard and I feel like um, having a community was at that point really helpful because without my wife and without having met Jasmine and without the Diane Initiative community and my friends in the Kubernetes community, there are way too many of you to listen to this keynote. <laughs> um, and, my, and everyone that I've met throughout my journey in tech, um, it would have been a lot harder. So resilience is great and all, but you also need a community. You need friends because you can only do the resilience thing for so long and i feel like there's no shame in admitting that that you need friends that you need help and that you need a little more um pick me up from the people around you you should never be afraid to ask for help from the people around you to ask for those cheerleaders to come in and psych you up and they should if they're in that cheerleader squad be able to do it and it's okay if they can't again we gotta respect boundaries here but while resilience is important, you should have a community that you can lean on. And if you can't find one, I promise you, you've got one here. The Diana Initiative is a thriving community and we're all ready to help each other. And it's a wonderful place to be. And I'm thrilled to be here myself. And I would not be where I am today if I hadn't met this community. And I highly recommend that you stick around for the socials and meet everyone here because it's a wonderful group and they really do try to help one another. And building community can be really hard, but this is a great place to start. Another thing is remember to regroup. You've always got to, you know, try to see the bigger picture. It might be really hard to see the forest for the trees, but you can always, you know, take a step back. It's hard to see that big picture, especially when you're in those dark, dark, dark times. It is hard. It is really, really hard to do. And I know because I've got meds over in the corner that say that was that hard. And that's okay. Again, gonna say that. It's okay to have been there. It's okay to be in that darkness, but you can see the way out. You can rise from the ashes because you are worth it. And eventually we'll all rise and we will be phoenixes and it will be awesome. But for right now, if you are sitting there and you are under those ashes and you don't see any way out, I promise you there is a way. I promise you there is. And I feel like seeing that bigger picture can be really difficult when you are in that moment and you are so far down that there is no hope and you feel like no matter how hard you try and how many interviews you do, you're never gonna get there, but you will. Just take a step back, breathe, and remember that you are worth it and that eventually, it might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, it might not be a week from now, eventually everything will get better. And that, to that note, focus on what you can improve right now, not tomorrow, not a week from now right now, at this very moment, what can you improve? It can be a line of code. It could be change your Twitter bio. 
take a selfie, whatever it is. If you can improve one thing about yourself or about your day, about your job hunt or your resume or even just your personal life, something you can improve at this very moment in time, right now, what can you improve that'll make your life better? Focus on that, especially if you're in those dark times. Focus on something that you can improve right now that'll make you feel a little better. I think that's very, very important. And also keep in mind, all it takes is one person, just one person to say yes. I had, no joke, 180 something no's. And that was a lot of no's. <laughs> a lot of them were autoresponders, love those, those are fun. But some of them were humans and some of them were after seven hours of interviews. We've been there, we've all been there. Through that seven hour final interview where you think, I got it, yeah. And you imagine yourself in the merch and you imagine yourself getting your swag box or whatever it may be. And then you get that email that says, we're sorry we decided to go with another candidate. And you sit there and you think, wow, six weeks of interviews, 12, 13 hours, and all I got was a sorry, we're going with someone else. Cool, that's fun. And it's made worse when if you're a marginalized person, you find out the person that was hired was a cisgender white dude. That hurts, we've been there too. I bet there's a lot of people like myself that have had that happen. And that's rough on that one. That one hurts a lot. And it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. And it's gonna hurt. But the important thing to remember is that for all those no's, and there will be a lot of them, all it takes is one yes to get your life to a place where you never imagined it would be. And for me, I never imagined I'd be here. I never imagined I'd have the opportunities I do now at Kamunda. I never imagined that I'd be giving a closing keynote, but here we are, all because one person said yes. So no matter how dark things seem, there was always light at the end of that tunnel. There was always a spark. And if you hold on to that and remember that even though it might be dark today, tomorrow's a better day and you might get a yes. Just hold on to that because it just takes one person. Another thing too, like I said earlier, lean on your community. That's super important. I know it's really, really fun for a lot of neurodivergent people to feel like we have to do everything alone. We have to we have to shoulder that burden. We have to be resilient because I know the stigma about people that are neurodivergent. I know the stigma about being autistic because I heard it my whole life. Uh, not from my family, but I heard it on the media. I heard it in the news. I read it in the papers, how hard it was to raise an autistic child, how difficult it was for parents, how challenging it was to be a parent of an autistic child, how much it was a struggle, but I'm lucky that my parents didn't see it that way. So they never made me feel like a burden. So that's, that was a really good shout out, thanks parents. Um, <laughs> but leaning on your community is important because a lot of us that are neurodivergent internalize that stigma that says who you are is a burden. That's not true, you are not a burden. Being neurodivergent is not a burden and no one should ever make you feel that way. You are not, your existence is not a burden. You don't have to do everything by yourself. It is okay to ask for help and you deserve to be helped when you ask. So lean on your community, lean on your friends and embrace the help that is offered to you because it's important to also accept help gracefully. And that can be hard too. It can be hard to say, yes, it's okay. I'm really struggling with this because especially if you've had employer trauma or you've been let down in the past when you've asked for help, it can be hard to say, okay, I'd like some help now because you never know if they're gonna let you down. But if you don't ask, you never know. And maybe they will let you down. I'm not gonna lie to you and say they won't, they might. That's a risk you gotta take, but life comes with risks. So you've gotta assess those and if the risk is worth it. If you need help, you should take that risk and lean on your community because chances are they will come forth and they will rally around you and they will get you to where you need to be. So lean on that community because you don't have to do everything by yourself and there's people out there that want to help you. Another thing too, very important, set boundaries. <laughs> Your future self will absolutely thank you. You might not know what they are even. You might go, boundaries, what's that? Boundaries are basically just a list of things that you will or won't do. Like. I don't want to work after such and such time. I don't want to get calls after X time. I don't 
like to get communication via this method of, I don't like to be texted, I don't like to be called, whatever it is. Set boundaries, very important. Because without boundaries, people will walk all over you. So <laughs> setting boundaries means that you know your worth and you know what you will or won't accept in a work environment. And even in your personal life or your professional life, having boundaries is great in every aspect of your life, not just your professional one. Boundaries are key because they mean that you have things about your life that you say, this is a hard line for me. I would like it if you respected this. And if somebody doesn't respect your boundaries, then well, they don't respect you. And that's on you how you deal with that. But I think having boundaries and addressing those and making sure that people understand them is key. So at the same time, make sure that people understand them and that you adhere to them too. It's important. Like if you have a boundary, don't, people will try to flex your boundaries. They'll try to test them. They'll try to get past. And it's like a pen test. They'll try to see where the weak points are. Well, if you said yes this one time, maybe you will again. If you answered the call at 7 p.m., maybe you'll do it if I call at 9. There's not that much difference. Mm -mm. Stick to the boundary. Reject that call. It's not that important. They'll leave a message and you can check it in the morning. It's okay. Unless you're on call, which in that case, you're, you should probably answer your phone. But if you're not on call, um, you, you deserve your boundaries to be respected. People will try to find those weak points and they'll try to take advantage of it if you don't set those boundaries and you don't stick to them. So check those weak points. Make sure you shore, shore, those, shore, shore up those, shore up the boundaries. Make sure everything's stable and stick to them and make sure that people understand them and that they're very clear. So that way there's no miscommunications and everybody understands what's expected of everybody else. So another thing that's important to remember is that you will rise above the ashes. Even your absolute worst day will soon be just a memory. And that's really important because um, I thought I had had a lot of days that were my worst days. And I've had a few that absolutely felt like that, that there was never going to be another good day ever. And I think we've all been there at some points where you think, this is the worst it's ever going to get, and I don't know how I will make it another day. I don't know how I'm going to get up in the morning and do this again. But you do. You do get up in the morning and you do it again. Because someday it's all going to be in the past, and you'll be able to look at it and say, wow, I've come a really long way. And I am very, very blessed and very grateful that, that has, this is where I am right now, that that day that I thought was my worst day. It was bad, but it wasn't my worst, not by a long shot. So if it feels like your worst day, and I know that it might for some of you, someday it's gonna be a memory. And I and a lot of other people here in this room right now will do whatever it takes to help you so that you can sit here and rise above those ashes and say, wow, that was a really bad day, but I got through it and it is behind me and I am stronger for it. So I think that's very important to remember that together we can help one another dust off those embers, take flight, and become stronger together. Because without community and without friends, we can't do that. We've all got to rise together. Things to remember, of course, you are awesome. You belong here. You're not an imposter. You are worthy of people's time. You are worthy of respect. You are worthy of equal pay. You are worthy of understanding of your neurodivergence. You are worthy of acceptance for your disabilities. You are worthy of everything that you bring to the table and you are worth all of that being respected. Don't let anyone think otherwise, even for a second. You are amazing and you deserve everything in the world that could ever be offered to you. And everyone here deserves nothing but the best because this is a great community and together, we are wonderful people, and we are doing wonderful things. And I think that it's only going to get better from here. And I feel like we are going to raise one another up and set this entire world on fire. Thank you so much for having me today. If you have any questions, please feel free to write me on Twitter. You can email me, add me on LinkedIn, whatever it may be. And I'll take any questions or talk to anybody for the little bit of time we've got left. Jasmine can feel free to come back. <laughs>
I can also try to reach out, hopefully. I would like to thank everybody for the opportunity to be here. I very much appreciate it. And I'm going to mess around with my AD setup for a moment. <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> there is there is lots of love and thank you oh, yeah. and crying yeah, like happening. Um, there's I the crying. Oh no, I don't want that. Uh, there's a good um, crying. I hope it's good crying. <laughs> yeah, I have not located questions yet. I, there's too much thank you and crying. Figure out how my like second monitor works. And I've been trying to scroll down to see chat and it's like, hear me out, but what if I didn't? <laughs> I'm like, why? So I am not going to be able to see chat this entire time. Uh, I have no idea what anyone is saying. <laughs> they're literally saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Great Aww, talk. Yeah. Thank you. Happy tears. Uh, so I wasn't, I wasn't exaggerating. This scrolling very rapidly. It's just, it's just a bunch. It's a wall. <laughs> nice. Yes. That, um, thank I you. Don't, all. <laughs> Question. So if somebody does have a question, please just start with the word yeah, question. Start so putting, yeah. Spotting it. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. Because I can't see anything. My computer's like your two monitors since then. <laughs> because if you're are you really giving a talk if your AV doesn't mess up in some horrible way? No. Uh, you're not. Yeah. You're not. Or you know, like uh, you have to tape the microphone to your face and then when you're ripping it off, you get hurt or something, you know. I'm not joking. Uh, my cat has a nasty habit of showing up in every important thing I ever do in my life. Hey, buddy. And per um, usual, you just saw his ear on the screen. Um, at my interview with Kamunda, um, he actually like had his little claws embedded in my forehead during my interview with my manager and my skip level. And I had to dislodge his foot from my forehead like and try to keep interviewing. And he's right here right now about to knock over my second monitor. So okay, recommendations. I... Ooh, I have a question. Yes. Kayla asks, how to any other recommendations on how to pick yourself up when in a rough position? Whew, okay. That's a good one. Um, what I did honestly was I just focused on literally anything that wasn't that rejection cycle. It was candles, it was getting outside, it was um going for walks with my dog, anything that got me off of the internet and away from Gmail where I was getting the wall of rejection. <laughs> anything. Um, another thing I did was um get a therapist. I got on Talkspace and I got one of those virtual therapists that I did very helpful very beneficial i also looked into um cbt and dbt um cognitive and dialectical behavior therapy always good um take some therapy talk to a therapist do some cbt or dbt whichever one works for you um it's really depends um everything everybody's different um i highly recommend therapy talk to somebody there's all those virtual therapist programs now there's a ton of them there's like so many there's better health there's talkspace there's san Velo. There's the list i love san Velo. san Velo is really cool the thing that I used in a combo was San Velo and um, Dalio. Dalio is a mood tracker, and San Velo is a full um, CBT and um, guided meditation app, kind of like Headspace, but with the therapy added to it. And it's actually by a licensed therapist, so that's pretty cool. Um, really enjoy that. It's also, do I have a neurodiversity ERG? Asks Amanda at our current company. No, but. I am absolutely going to try and start one. <laughs> it's on my to-do list. Trust me, I have brought it up. <laughs> I am hoping to eventually in the future. I'm pretty sure my management team is watching this um, and they know it's coming. I, that is not a surprise. They're like, oh, the neurodiversity ERG thing again. <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> but yes, and if you are hoping to start a neurodiversity employee resource group, um, my key thing that I cannot stress enough is please, please talk to your neurodivergent employees. Don't just start it. Nothing about us without us. Please, please, please talk to the people. Do I prefer ghosting to rejection without explanation? Asks Colleen. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Best question. Um, do I prefer ghosting? Yes. Ghost me. Please ghost me. <laughs> I beg of you. Never speak to me again. I absolutely prefer to be ghosted uh, as opposed to um, getting rejected after like 12 hours of interviewing. That's way worse. Just don't talk to me. Just don't even follow up. Don't send me the autoresponder. Just never speak to me. It's fine. I, I'll, I'll just think it got lost in the void. It's okay. No hard feelings. <laughs> I absolutely think that's true. Yeah, um, I, I totally think that that's way better. Um, yeah, I would, I would absolutely say ghost me for sure. Um, if anybody else prefers actually getting rejected, um, 
wow, you have better, you have thicker skin than I do because I there's a, there were only so many rejections I could take, and that's why I'm giving this keynote right now because I ended up at the point where I could not take any more of them, and then I was sat online, and then I met Jasmine, and now we're here. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so that one worked out, maybe. It did. In the it end. did. In the end, yes, because meeting Jasmine got me to the point where I got the platform evangelist title, which then got me into the DevRel Collective Slack, which got me to meet Mary, who linked to the job that I have now. And then I applied for it, and then I interviewed, and I got said job. So it all worked out in some serendipitous way. <laughs> it was very right. interesting indeed. It looks like yeah. some people are questioning in the event chat, except the event chat does not come to the stage. You have to comment in the stage chat. So for those oh, who don't notice, there's like a small okay. tabby thing. So luckily, um, some friendly people clued us in. So if your question oh, has not been answered, you might be in the event chat and not the stage mm -hmm. chat. So copy it on copy over the here. Stage chat, please. please, I want to answer your questions. I would love to. Put them in the right chat, please. <laughs> I can't even access them, so they're better off than I am. I can't read anything. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't know, we are in the magical place called StreamYard, which is not Hopin, and no. we can't see any of the I other areas of Hopin that you all can see. Nope. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is sad but true. <laughs> On the other hand, this is way better than last year. It so is. It is way better than last year. Last year was fun, though. I had a good time last year. I had a good time. It was good. This, this just keeps getting better. This is like one of those things that's like fine wine. It just ages. It's good. I'm here for it. Like Diana Initiative 2024 is going to be nice. Nice. Real nice. I'm here for it, honestly. Really I cool. mean, if the hotel in Vegas could not charge us an arm, a leg, and somebody's firstborn child for bandwidth, we could probably do amazing hybrid stuff, but... Um, that would be nice, yeah. That's that's unlikely, because it's Vegas. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I'm actually going to see if I can see the um, stage chat really quick. Maybe, hopefully. I'm going to mute my own um, <laughs> thing, though, and see if I can. Um, oh, question I, I want to. I see one. Oh. Yay. Oh. I want to be involved yes. with Diana Initiative. <laughs> yes, you can volunteer again. That's a good question. That's an easy one. I'm here for it. Yes, you can. You can speak. Oh, we're getting lots of volunteers. Yay. That makes me joy. All right. Wonderful. What a joy. That's fun. That's fun. All right, well, really with cool. that, that, I think really unless cool. you yeah. can figure out how to find the stage chat questions, um, I, I think will people, people have just determined that they are lost. and uh, They are. I'm going to see what I've got here going on. Um, I'm going to scroll up a little bit. Someone said they love Delio. Shout out. I love Delio as well. Delio is great. Um, wonderful, wonderful. Um, Dalio buddies, everyone loves Dalio. Please track your moods in Dalio. My streak's 526 days. Can you beat me? Let's challenge. Track those moods. See where you're at. Tracking your moods is important because that way you can see, oh, this thing. Do I know of any infosec specific organizations that advocate for neurodiversity? Who? Infosec specific? Giant initiative? Uh, uh, the. Kind of, yes. Kim Crowley disinfosec. Kim Crowley, yes. That, that. Um, disinfosec. Yeah. That, yes. Um, Put that into in those, the search engine of your yeah, choice. <laughs> totally. Um, not InfoSec specific, but Mozilla Festival has an entire track dedicated to neurodiversity. Um, and it's really great. And if you want to get involved with that, um, it's awesome. Highly recommend. Really cool. Um, would definitely recommend doing that. Um, and we have for another sure, for question sure. for which I'm going to boop somebody with a noodle. Uh, We're getting booped, oh, and no. he knows he knows what's coming. He's getting booped with <laughs> a noodle. No, no, no. The answer is no. <laughs> that would be yeah. He is, yeah, I can see you are getting booped with a noodle. Yep. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but you could. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Oh, here oh, we go. Uh, so that is the term. Put yep, that term in your search yes. engine of choice, that. please, and Absolute, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely do that. 840 days in Delio. Ah, somebody did beat me. 
I love it. Mora Stone, Mora, they are amazing, wonderful. I love it. The absolute goal there. Wow. Oh, look, we days. even got, haha, -ha, for those who don't want a search engine. I love it. Nice. Wonderful. Wonderful. So cool. So cool. I love it. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Well, on that note, um, I'm going to give you 10 minutes of your life back, Nicole, if you'd like. And you can... Well, I'm going to uh, do the closing count. Absolutely. So everyone can get right. through partying in the socials early. Perfect. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you so everyone. much. Thank and you. Uh, thank you for having all the happy crying. It was not sad crying. Yeah. I think it was all happy crying. <laughs> That's really good. Awesome. Well, thank you again, everyone, for having me. It was a real pleasure. What a delight. Thank you very much. I will see you all again next year. All right, now I get to scramble and figure out my AV because this is this is the end of the conference, right? All right, share. Ta -da. All right, yes, all right. We have reached the end. And for those of you who didn't know why you were here, we're a diversity focused conference committed to helping all underrepresented genders, sexualities, races, and cultures in information security. And if you didn't notice, that's slightly different than last year. Um, so hopefully you like the tweak. And thank you to all of our sponsors. For those of you who have never run, an event. Um, you don't know how many different things you end up needing to purchase. Uh, mail merging software and scheduling software and CFP software and I could go on and on and on and you would be very bored. But in order to have this event, and I think you all had fun based on the chat, we had to have all of these sponsors and I really appreciate them. And in fact, we had even more than that sponsors. Uh, so there you go. Can everyone see that StreamYard sharing your screen thing? I hope not, because it's like blocking some of our sponsors. Um, anyway, if you scroll down to the bottom of the stage, keep scrolling all the way down. I believe we have the sponsor logos down there as well. Well, it's been a rough year. Uh, this is from Who, and uh, we're at over 4 million people that we have lost, and they didn't really need to be lost because there was a pandemic. And outside of the pandemic, it's also been really rough. There's been breaches, zero days that are actually getting exploited, ransomware, people trying to mix different chemicals into a water system because somebody didn't change a password, you know, all the stuff that we have to work nights and weekends. But, we're here together. 1,740 of us apparently bought tickets um, for all of the volunteers. Uh, some of you had to buy them twice. Sorry, uh, there were some snafus. Uh, 119 people made this event happen. So when we say it takes a village, we really do mean that it takes a village. Those 119 people did 210 volunteer shifts. And those shifts are multiple hours in different places simultaneously. Some people have been sitting in chairs all day doing AV. Uh, some people have been helping you in chat. Some people have been running around and doing resume reviews and mock interviews. So if you're interested next year, all sorts of ways you can volunteer. We had 55 speakers on the main stage. We had six speakers on the Career Village stage, and we had 24 speakers in Teen Village. Together, the CTF Village had four different CTFs. And for the TDI Core event, here is the top 10 winners. I believe this was hosted, yep, on Try Hack Me. You should be getting emails if you haven't already. Um, if you're one of those winning persons. There was also the Secure Code Warrior winners, and apparently the top three participants are getting prizes. Woo! There's a lot of prizes this year for CTF. It's very exciting. 
There was also the CISA and ICS CTF. And it looks like the top team, so this one's a team made of, I don't know, is it three people? I think so. Sorry, like these notes were literally being made during the keynote, so some are taking me by surprise. I think it's a team of three people. We're going to go with that. And Marcel says, yes, the winners are getting emails. Yay. And last but not least, the OWASP DevSlop winners. The top five participants are getting prizes. So look for emails if you were one of the people listed there. We will also tweet these out in case anyone's like, that slide went by too quickly. So congratulations to everyone that played. Honestly, if you get any flags or even no flags at all, CTFs don't need to be really competitive. I know some people are really competitive, but it's all about learning things, having fun, goofing stuff up and breaking stuff. So. We also had IoT Village. They were kind enough to come here. It requires equipment and time and energy for them to set up all of those labs. And they hosted their 101 labs, which means you can come in with zero experience and do a hands-on set of things with Internet of Things connected devices and learn all about them and breaking them. Over the past two days, 280 five lab sessions happened for a total of 82.5 hours. That's a heck of a lot of time. And they will be at DEF CON if you are doing the DEF CON thing. So if you didn't get the opportunity or wanted to do a little bit more, you can catch them there. Career Village, they did six talks, 40 or more. These are approximates. Like I said, everyone was kind of scrambling to get numbers to me last minute. 40 or more LinkedIn and resume reviews, 17 or more mock behavioral interviews and technical interviews. So for everyone who did get that experience, I hope that it was helpful. Uh, if you ever need more help, please reach out to us on Twitter. We know of other events like B-Sides who also do similar things. And there are some chronic volunteers with hand raise you know, problems uh, that came and participated in our career village and we do the same for them. So you can always get another review if you had a lot of edits. So they also had 16 hours of live AMAs, which I believe were pretty hopping most of the time. And that I guess was a pun, I didn't mean it. Teen Village. So this was the first year we were trying out something new. We do send out like feedback things. So hopefully we hear from our teens. The teens that were there got to do Oregon Trail, AMAs, learn about OSINT, different career paths. I mean, honestly, I was kind of jelly. They also got some really good prizes. So overall, I would say win. Nobody died. Apparently, nobody said a curse word. So we're calling it victory. And of course, Maker Village. In person, I think this is our most physically popular event. You usually can't put more people into the room with Chris. And we completely sold out of the PCBs again. So I think that just proves the point. You all like to solder. Hopefully not burn yourself, which is my common activity when involving a soldering iron. There is two questions in our main survey. If you missed taking the survey that was posted on Twitter, or you can go take the survey on Twitter, um, or in the village itself about what you would want next year beyond just the badge blinky things. So our code of conduct team said there were three minor incidents. One thing that they had to keep an eye on. No one was removed from the conference, but we did have to mute somebody. So. One additional thing over last year. Overall, not bad. I really appreciate all of the volunteers for this team who had to go read all of the chats. Uh, for anybody who was trying to keep up in the chats, there's a lot of text going on. So they were very busy people and greatly appreciate that. So is everybody ready for 2022? Well, it's going to be August 10th through 11th at the Westin Hotel in Las Vegas. We already signed the contract, so unless something terrible happens, those are gonna be the dates. And the tickets are already a sale on sale on Eventbrite. So you can go get them now if you really wanna make sure that you get in. Obligatory reminder, we're not for profit. All of us are unpaid volunteers. In fact, all of us are you. 
So you can volunteer or donate or both. Also, if your company would like to throw money at us, since we're a nonprofit, we'll take some 2022 sponsors. We'll get some packets up there as soon as possible with some early bird pricing. If you have feedback specifically for the speakers, go to Sketch, which is linked on the website, or you can go to Sketch directly, or you can look on Twitter and find the talk that you want to give feedback on. Click on it to see the details and then click the feedback survey link. That will give you a Google survey with like four questions, answer them. If there are answers in there, speakers, after a couple of weeks, I will give you the feedback. Last year, there was not a ton of feedback. So if you don't receive feedback and are wondering if I just fell asleep and forgot, you can message me and ask, uh, but I will try to get these out in a couple of weeks. So feedback about the event. What went well? What did not go well? What ideas do you have for next year? That's the form. It's also gonna be on social media. It's also going to the mailing list and all the registered attendees. So if you can't scramble down that URL fast enough, don't worry. Uh, or it looks like, oh, I thought John had posted it. That's the feedback for Rin's talk. Go do the feedback for Rin's talk. Also, happy belated International Non-Binary People's Day. Yay, it was right before the event and I forgot to tweet. So consider this my tweet. And for those of you who didn't know, now you know for next year and can celebrate. And this slide kind of makes me mad. I shouldn't have to say any of this. In fact, there's a ton of things that should be on here that aren't because I can't fit them or maybe I've forgotten or maybe I don't know about them, but TLDR, can we all just be nice to one another and respect one another? Um, so yes, this, I don't know what else to say. Technology is not apolitical. Women's rights are human rights. Nothing about us without us. Trans lives matter. No human is illegal. Black lives matter. Stand with indigenous peoples. Stop the hate on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Rights, not rescue, and pay equity now? This year, our slogan was spark a journey. We started off with igniting a spark. Alyssa, let us know that if you are the one who ignites the flames of your career, you can't get burned. You are the flame. Next, we learned about practicing aggressive empathy, which I think was a new thing that was added to all of our vocabulary. So if you currently are fired up, offer a helping hand to your local community, your events that you like, your workplace, be a mentor. You don't have to be the smartest person ever. You just have to know a bit more than somebody else. Do you have multiple years experience in a thing? Go check Cyber Mentoring Monday. You can probably mentor somebody who has never done that thing. Share job opportunities that you see. Just because you see them doesn't mean everybody else in your network has. Boost the signal for anybody who's looking for work. Maybe their network isn't as big as yours. Work to create equitable entry-level opportunities if you can at your workplace. Point out, does that have to be a senior position? Hey, we've already got enough seniors. Can we open a mid-level? Can we open a junior? Can we do a summer intern? Sustain that spark. Take care of yourself. Be kind and care for others whenever you can. As we found out from Steph, you need to make sure that you set time to assess what matters to you. It's not gonna be what matters to everybody else. Figure out what you need, and when you're interviewing, find an employer that matches your needs. You are interviewing them as much as they are interviewing you. Not everyone can always be that choosy, but when you can, 
try to find the best fit company. Encourage your play workplace to take the pay equity pledge. Everyone should get paid fairly, right? Be an ally. This is an ongoing act. You don't just decide that you're an ally. You try, you make a mistake, you apologize, you learn from it, you keep going. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Most of all, if you can boost somebody else, especially if they're not being heard, boost them instead of talking over them. So what if you couldn't sustain your spark and you lost it? Well, we just heard what happens when you need to recover your spark. Do whatever you need to do to keep going. Pets, plants, candles, find a cheerleader. Resilience alone is not gonna get you through it. Find a community, set boundaries, and find a way to rise from the ashes. When your spark grows into a flame, use it to light the way for others. I hope you all join us at our social and we'll see you next year.